Yesterday, we were talking that talk, the most complex quarterback division in football to me, that AFC East. Zach Wilson, Tua Tungavailoa, Mac Jones, Josh Allen. I think the most pressure quarterback in that division, Zach Wilson. I'm breaking bread with my brother yesterday, Dave, and Dave was like, eh, I don't know, Acho. I got a better name for you. What was that name? Yeah, I, I thought you overall, overall did a good job, but... Look, I don't want to talk about teams in New Jersey. Like, I'm going to say something that doesn't make sense in the media landscape. Who cares what happens with the New York Jets? The Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen. That's what I expected you to say, and I've been thinking about this all offseason. I think the world is on that guy's shoulders, and I'll tell you why. Think about this, and, and this is why I love the NFL. It is the most parody-driven league. The Buffalo Bills were Browns-esque for mm -hmm. 20 years. Up until they broke their playoff drought in 2017, they had the longest one in American sports. Feels like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? Because they've been banging on this door for three years. They make it to the playoffs in 19, they lose. They get to the conference title game, they're not quite ready to beat Mahomes. Last year, 13 seconds away from beating the Chiefs at their place, and, like, and you know the whole city of Buffalo is just waiting for a chance to, to make amends for that. And they are one of two three super, like true Super Bowl contenders here in the month yep. of August. You're yep. like, it's the Bills, it's the Bills, it's the Chiefs, it's the Rams. They are in that conversation. And, and another wrinkle of this that I love, I think Buffalo is, I, you know, don't get mad at me. I think y'all are the best fans and the best vibe in the NFL. It's the closest thing to a college football vibe. And Acho, you know what that's like. Yep. You know the passion mm -hmm. at UT. You know what it's like. The whole city of Buffalo revolves around that team. And it's on Josh Allen to get them to a Super Bowl, which they've never won, by the way. Like, is it making sense now? Like, is all of this adding up? I think this dude is under more pressure than just about anybody in the league. I love, love, love that answer. My thought, though, would be this. Josh Allen went from being the biggest bust after 2015 at the quarterback position to the greatest quarterback talent-wise after 2015 at the quarterback position. Y'all remember, Josh Allen, Wyoming kid. Small school, hard to find Wyoming on a map, particularly hard to find Laramie, Wyoming on a map. It's one of the square states. Uh, yeah. Sure. Um, so that's who Josh Allen was. That's where he came from. Terrible rookie season. Next thing you know, sophomore season, not that bad. By his third year in the league, he's second in MVP voting to mm. only Aaron Rodgers and had more total yards than Aaron Rodgers. So I think Josh Allen... As I look at it, Slick, he's a little bit playing with house money only because we looked at Josh Allen as a lost cause. And then he turned into the prodigal son when he came back home and started balling. I don't know just yet, Dave, if he's under that much pressure because it almost feels like that in which we lost, we got in a surplus now. Yeah. I did, like, and, and that sounds good. I, and I hate to, <laughs> I hate to project Josh's career out 20 years. That's not what I'm trying to do. Reminds me of Dan Marino a little bit. Got to a Super Bowl in his second year. Never got back. And that, and this is what you start to talk about. Say the Bills fall short this year. Say maybe they don't even get as far. Maybe, you know, somebody gets hurt. Maybe something happened. And that that pressure starts to mount. And I think and I agree. Josh Allen is beloved by Bills fans. I think, I mean, I love watching the guy play. Again, I'm not criticizing his ability as a player at all. I think he's phenomenal. But he is just, it's this rocket ship ascent. And what happens if it doesn't continue? What happens if three years from now we're saying, are the Bills going to win the big one with Josh Allen? Like, that's the type of narrative that starts to come around. Slick, weigh in on this. AFC East quarterbacks, mm -hmm. you have Josh Allen, you have Mac Jones, who we will talk about a little bit later. Mac Jones, he might have more than a sophomore slump. You got Zach Wilson. I think Zach Wilson is in major trouble because he was atrocious last year. Not bad. He was atrocious, and say what you want about the forgotten New York Jets, they're still in New York, major football yeah. market. And then beyond that, you have Tua Tungavailoa, who everybody's putting the weight of the world on. Slick, speak to us a little bit about the pressure of the AFC East. What quarterback are you looking at with the most pressure? I'm not going to say you're wrong. I'm just going to say I couldn't disagree more. Did I say that? I've already used that line. It's right? a good line. Uh, we are in sync, and not yeah. just because Dave decided to put a tie on today, no. and you're wearing <laughs> cashmere like dry fit or I something. I side with the sure person on the on. opposite side of the thank argument. You, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for that. No, it, it's Josh Allen, and I would dare say that I could make a case for Tua and Mac having more pressure than Zach Wilson because of what the expectations are. Mm -hmm. The Jets are not expected to take some massive leap. The over-under on Fox Bet is that they have five and a half wins. They had 
four last year, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, right? That's a two-win boost. Meanwhile, you have the Buffalo Bills favored as the team to win the Super Bowl this year. Exactly. The of all in all of football. And yes, Josh Allen two years ago, 13 and 3, he came off of it a little bit last year. He was terrific in the playoffs. Nine TDs, zero interceptions. But we're talking about him, uh, his team being the best in football, which arguably would demand that you have the best quarterback in football. So it's who he's competing against and what people are expecting from the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills are expected to win the Super Bowl mm -hmm. this year. Josh Allen is expected to lead them there. I can't think of anything that would be more pressure-packed than that. Very well put. I love the pressure you're talking about. I can't wait to see how that plays out. Though we say Zach Wilson, we say Josh Allen, I think that this man, too, is the most universally pressured quarterback in football. Mm. And I'm starting to feel bad for him. I rarely feel bad for NFL players, but for Tua, I do. As a quarterback, you might have to deal with a lack of offensive weapons. As an NFL quarterback, you might have to deal with a lack of consistency in the run game. As an NFL quarterback, you might have to deal with an incompetent head coach. You might have to deal with an offensive coordinator that doesn't know the cadence of calling plays. But as an NFL quarterback, you shouldn't have to deal with uh, being replaced by Tom Brady or your ownership trying to replace you with Tom Brady in the middle of the season. You shouldn't have to deal with a owner who is encouraging your coach yeah. to not win games. I won't say lose games, but to not win games. You shouldn't have to deal with all of the allegations that Tua is having to deal with. I understand there's a fine print that you sign when you sign a contract. You got to deal with being famous, interviews, etc. But I feel bad for Tua because what the Dolphins have dealt him as far as a hand, it's been more than just a losing hand. The deck is rigged. Dave, do you feel sorry for Tua Tungabailoa? Is it okay if I agree with everything you just said and still don't really feel sorry for him? I mean, like, I mean, this, it, it is what it is, mm -hmm. man. And that's, the, there are pitfalls to being a quarterback just like there are, are, are great aspects of it, right? When everything's going good, you're the man, you get the commercials, you get all the praise. It's part of being an NFL quarterback that you, this stuff is going to fall on you. And yeah, I mean, the Dolphins talk about dysfunctional. But again, like, what are we talking about? We're not talking about them trading for Jimmy G or Baker Mayfield. It's Tom Brady, man. Mm. Seven Super Bowls. Like, he's <laughs> inarguably right. the best to ever play. Like, the only person or right. the only people, and aside from the fact that it's blatantly against the rules, Dolphins, I'm not sure if you're aware of that, but the only people that would blame them for trying to do this are Tua and his family. Everyone else is like, yeah, <laughs> yeah if you yeah. could get Tom Brady, you should probably do it. Okay, I hear that, but it's kind of like slick. In humanity, we know they say you're born, you suffer, you die. Right? In a nutshell, that's what happens as we exist. Got some highlights in there. You know, maybe you get married, maybe you have children, maybe you get wealthy, who knows? But you're born, you suffer, you die. I get it, Dave. It's a part of our existence. But it's not to say that some aspects of suffering are a little inhumane. It's a part of the quarterback existence, the quarterbackial existence that you gotta deal with certain things. But tanking, tampering, racism allegations, that's not in the fine print or the job description of being a QB. That's why I'm just like, yo, this is a lot. Slick, you're yeah. looking at me. What do you think? Yeah, I understand why you would feel sorry for him. I understand why Dolphins fans or anybody would feel sorry for him. I just don't. And it's because he is an NFL. Well, they player. are in sync. We are okay. completely We didn't talk sync. before it's the, the show. It's the Navy so Blue Jackets. Yeah. There's something about the Navy Blue. Who knows? Blue. I, look. And I like Tua. Like, as a person, I see the way he carries himself. I look at the numbers that he's put up. Like, that his – it's not – I don't have a dog in the fight. The fact that I think that the Miami Dolphins are ready to move on and are looking for somebody else and are just building their team as they go along is reading the tea leaves as opposed to thinking that me personally believes that Tua is not capable of being a quarterback. He has the opportunity, regardless of whatever you have – the Dolphins have done to him – he has the opportunity to demonstrate that he is a starting NFL quarterback in the league, and they have upgraded in terms of, well, one question in terms of the head coach, but they got a new head coach. It's supposed to be better for him. Offensively, yes. They got him a, a new wide receiver. Yep. They got him a new left tackle. Yep. Like, they have given him an opportunity. It may not be with the Dolphins moving forward. Well, wait but wait a second. You say this. Oh, wait, oh, hold on a second. Uh -oh. Go ahead. Let me, one thing. I need a 30. You though. said, I'm not making the team. I'm making the league. Mm-hmm. 
Tua still has a tremendous opportunity to demonstrate that he's an NFL quarterback. Oh, that, that's a little harsh for me. What were you going to say? It's a little harsh to say that his next opportunity might not be with the Dolphins. I mean, that's what I was going to say is, okay, Tua, and let's not talk about Tua like he's – a seventh round pick that's just trying to make sure. his way like this guy was more hyped than Herbert and Burrow when he was still at Alabama. Here's why I needed a quick look. Is this a 30 or is this a minute? Where we at on basketball references? Is this a 30? I don't know. <laughs> no. What's that? What's that? This 20? is a short one. That's a 30. That's, that's a 30. A Big yeah. dogs. The yeah. 30s or 20. I need a quick one. Yeah. Here's why. Um, don't give me the bare minimum and act like you're doing me a favor. Because, Slick, you make a great point. The Dolphins have upgraded at wide receiver Tyree Kill. They've upgraded on the offensive line. They've upgraded from an explosive perspective at running back Raheem Mostert. They've upgraded offensively as a head coach, Mike McDaniel. I don't know in totality go. as a head coach, but offensively they've upgraded. But don't give me the bare minimum and act like you're doing me a favor. You're doing you a favor. And at minimum, if you're going to draft me that high, then give me some things to work with. Justin Herbert, drafted top five. Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, new head coach. This is supposed to be a brilliant head coach. Those are defensive one. Austin Eckler, 600 yards rushing, 600 yards receiving. Only player in ball to do that. Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, offensive head coach Zach Taylor that came from Sean McVay's coaching tree. If you're going to draft me that high, Give me what you're, I need. You're saying they haven't? Not until this year. Okay. Not well, until this they year. Got, they got Hill. They got Jalen Waddell, who quietly had a really nice rookie season. Like, if it weren't for Jamar Chase, you'd probably be talking about him a lot more. Like, he's got Mike Gusecki, good enough to be franchised. Sure. He's got talent. And that's the point I was going to make is, again, this is a top 10 pick. And so, yes, this whole situation sucks for Tua. I do feel bad for him. He seems like a great guy. Go ball, my dude. Go yeah. ball. And you know what? If the Dolphins are 4-1 and one and he looks great, this will be a non-issue, and you will be the toast of Miami, a town that's been starved for a winning team forever.